Hi, Brian Lawton with Property Revival Realty here with you today. We've got a guest, Ron Williams, our broker at Property Revival, and we're going to be talking about real estate investing, really the basics of that. We'll go through the types of real estate investment you can have. We'll talk specifically about South, South Central Wisconsin and maybe some deals, Ron, that you're seeing or some trends that you're seeing um, in our area of where we deal with real estate investors and really just take it from the beginning, what real estate investing is. Maybe you watch it on TV. Maybe you've always been curious about it, or maybe you've just started uh, real estate investing yourself and you can get some tips and pointers. So with that, we'll get going, Ron. And I guess where we want to start is just kind of the overall picture of real estate investing. There's really two ways to do it. You can buy real estate and flip it. So you uh, buy a distressed property, bring it back to life, and then put it back on the market and try to make uh, money that way. Uh, and you can also just do a long-term invest, which is more the buy and hold. So you're buying a property and you plan to hold it for a long time period of time. So start there with just kind of an overview of flip versus buy and hold and why an investor would want to do that. Yeah. So like you said, there's two basic parameters for investing, which is buy and hold or, or flip. And on the flip side, so that's when you go in, you buy a property, um, and you see that it's either undervalued in the marketplace that you're in, um, or you can put some things into it and, and bring that value up to it. Um, you know, it's this is more of a, I call it more of a job as opposed to right. investing. Um, it's a short-term investment. It's you're going to get, um, you could get a big bang for your buck, um, but it's it's not one of those things that you're going to necessarily. You, you have to continue to do it over and over again. But because once you're done the first time, it's because you it's cash over. out and then your money comes, yeah, or not, or you lose, but right, your money comes and then that's over. That's not producing any more income for you. Is what you're right. saying exactly. So when you're looking to buy a property like that, what what are some some things you're looking for with any real estate investment? You really got to know how you're buying a property. So you got to study the market. You have to really understand what's happening in your market. And hiring a real estate agent to do that for you, if you're not one, is probably a good start. Hugely important. I mean, you know, you, you can be, you can take a property in, say, Janesville, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and you look at the price of it, and you see this, I don't know, call it a 2,400 square foot house, and you can pick up for less than 250,000 or, or whatever. Right. And if you're from, say, Seattle, and you see that price, you're like, wow, buy that house, it's worth a million bucks. Yeah. I mean. You know, you, you need to have someone who knows what they're doing in the market and, and have a good understanding of it because, again, you have to do apples to apples when you're comparing these things and looking at investing in real estate um, mm -hmm. because, again, you could lose really big. That 2,400 square foot house or 2,400 yeah, square foot house may only be worth 100000 I right. mean, if, and that's, so that's a big risk. So, so they should, somebody looking to invest should make sure they really understand the market they're investing in should hire somebody to help them do that. And by hire, you simply mean you you find an agent, you interview a few agents, somebody that understands real estate investing, somebody that understands that market and can help you locate a property then, right? Yeah, what I tell people, you know, you're you're creating this to invest, right? So you, you have an investment team. And what that team needs to be is you need to have someone who, who understands the real estate market. You're going to be the money person behind this, right? So mm -hmm. you want your money to work for you um, just like any other situation. So your expert in the real estate world has to be, an, and, and not only do they need to be an expert in the real estate world and in their local market, but they kind of need to fit your team and understand what your goals are right. and, and be a good team player for so you. So they got to fit. And that's what I kind of mean, make sure you interview several agents that fit or hire a few at first and have them all go to work for you, you know, whatever that is, but make sure that they have a personality that fits with you, have values that align with your values and really have a true understanding of what your needs are as an investor and what you can actually afford and what you're looking for. Yeah. One thing that I really press on investors is have a plan mm -hmm. and stick to that plan because, um, People are going to come and throw deals at you that make sense and you think are going to be good. But if it goes against your plan, then you, you start getting away from what you're you're mm -hmm. trying to do. So having that plan and making sure that your team is fully on board with that plan is really, really important. So you're talking about a team. One thing you mentioned is a real estate agent. 
you've got money, somebody with money that's on your team, and that might be you as the investor, or maybe your job is you're gonna, you have a different talent that you're bringing mm -hmm. to that real estate team. What other teammates do you need when you go to real estate invest? You need some sort of lender if you're not gonna cash. Right, a lender's good, even if you are a cash buyer, it's always good to have a lender mm -hmm. uh, on hand to you know, just pick up some of the slack mm -hmm. and, and have less of your own money at play. So a lender's really important. Your accountant is another important play, mm -hmm. um, and uh, an attorney. I mean, these are all really important pieces. Again, a part of your team that just understand what your right. goals are, because you're, you know, you're. I would assume your end goal is to build wealth and, and to have more money than what you started with. Mm -hmm. So. Um, all these people help keep that in place. So, and then when you're talking, we're talking about flip is the way we started this. So we'll talk about buy and hold in a little bit. We're talking about the team. And so the team you need to flip a property is also gonna include people that can do the work, right? Yeah, you're gonna need a contractor. Um, and, and depending on how you do that, it could be a, one general contractor or multiple, you know, plumbers, HVAC guys, all those things. So it's getting those things in place. And again, and making sure they're licensed and making sure they are pulling permits and doing everything that, and understanding their line of work. And maybe a, maybe you are a contractor that is trying to be a real estate investor. And so that's a talent you can bring to that team and, and help the budget and help save money as well. Right. I mean, there's, it's just that there's lots of ways to be a part of this team. Um, it doesn't have to just be cash. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and having the proper insurance in place mm -hmm. uh, for those contractors, another really important part. So, you know, everybody watches the flip shows on television and I sometimes catch them late at night and you always see the end about how much money they're making and all this sort of thing. And I always sort of miss the holding costs. They, they never seem to report holding costs, but holding costs, maybe talk a little bit about what holding costs are and why they're important if you're flipping a house. So if you establish your team, you've got a lender, you've got, um, you know, a contractor, you know, you got that lined up, you've got an agent that helped you survey the market and you identified a bunch of properties. And by the way, it won't be the first property you identify. You probably got to search hundreds to find one deal. There's always deals out there, but you've got to search a lot. You've got to be patient, I guess is my point. But you have all that and then we sort of miss the holding cost part on these TV shows. Sometimes some of them give them, but Talk a little bit about holding costs and why it's important to monitor that. Yeah, so your holding costs are those uh, expenses that you don't really think about. I mean, you always, you know, you, you put your budget in place for the items you have to fix, you know, whether it's roofs, flooring, kitchens, that kind of thing. But the holding costs, just by owning that property, there are expenses. You have real estate taxes. If you have a loan, there's interest. If you don't have a loan, there's what would that money be doing for me if I was putting it mm -hmm. somewhere else? Yeah. Um, there's utility bills because you got to keep the heat on. You got to keep it cool. Do you want to keep you know, water? Things, yeah, water on. You, you're if you're in the city, you have um, sewer water and and then trash pickup. Uh, those costs are they're fixed costs that are there. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in a rural area, um, you know there there may be some other costs with with your septic and and those things. Um, you know and and then. Uh, mowing the lawn, uh, making the thing look good, you know, is, are all just part of holding yeah. the property, basically. Yep. And so while they are fixed costs on a monthly basis, you can control how long you have those costs by making sure your team is in place and you're ready to go to flip this house and that you get done in a reasonable amount of time. Because if you don't have a plan before you close on that property, and the clock starts ticking on all those holding costs, that just raises your expenses a lot month by month if you drag that project out. Right, I mean, exactly. And that's why a contractor is so important because if you don't have your scope of work in place and ready to go, and so the day you close, guys are hitting the ground working, it may take a couple of months before a contractor mm -hmm. can come in and do the work. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that, that's it's uh, holding costs can get pretty costly on you pretty you, quickly. And you have a lot of experience uh, as a real estate investor. I've done a little bit, <clears throat> but one thing I think that we saw, especially coming out of the recession and into when you could really find a deal anywhere, and you still can find a lot of great deals, um, but is just that remember that you're contributing to your community and to your, the neighborhood that you're flipping in. It's not just a money thing, and uh, you can make money doing it 
an ethical and right way by improving neighborhoods. And I think that's a really important part about being a real estate investor is that you are, in essence, giving back to the community that you exist in and you operate in that gives you a lot by living there. And you're improving neighborhoods that is gonna really benefit that community. Yeah, and I think what's, you know, we have the term paint the pig. You know, and there's some people who that's what they decide to do. They just take it and and try to make it into this pretty thing, and they haven't truly improved an asset in the neighborhood. Um, but what what we see doing, and what we try to do, is you know we go find the property, we totally go in, dig it out, and, and, and start making true improvements to it. And what happens is the neighbors come and look and see what we're doing, and then they're like, "Oh, we don't want to be the worst house on the block now." Yeah, there's pride in that yeah, with the neighborhood, there is. And, and and that's to us, extremely important. Uh, to me personally as an investor, um, I, I want to make a neighborhood better. I don't want to just go mm-hmm. in and make a splash. And, and that, that affects the very beginning about identifying property because that's going to cost you more money as a real estate investor when you're talking about really digging into the house and really digging into what's wrong with it and how you can improve it and what the budget is, how much that's going to cost. And so identifying that sort of house is very different than just identifying a quick, we'll just paint the interior, maybe replace the carpet and put a for sale sign on it. Um, But looking at the HVAC, the roof, the walls, could we redesign the inside to make it more modern? Could we open walls? You know, how are the windows? The bigger ticket items that really significantly improve a neighborhood. Yeah, it is. And, And you know, the thing is when you dig into those properties, um, you may find something that if you had just painted yeah. the pig, you wouldn't have found, and then that becomes a bigger issue yeah. down the road. So right. um, it's it, it while it is more expensive and you probably don't make as much long term, mm-hmm. it certainly saves you from the big mistakes that might happen, mm-hmm. which I think is really important. So we talked a little bit about uh, flipping and being a real estate investor and, and going down that road, building your team you know, being ethical about it, contributing to the neighborhood and the way you make money. It's more of a J-O-B, more of a job because the money comes and then that's it. And so the other side, why I think that most intelligent real estate investors get in is the buy and hold side, which can create wealth. You want to talk just a little bit about the concept of buy and hold investing? Yeah. So buy and hold is you, just like it says, you buy the property and you're going to hang on to it. You're going to have someone pay you rent and the goal is for that rent to cover all your costs on the property and then all of a sudden you no longer have a loan on it or you've been bringing in this mm-hmm. income you know, for the last however long and, and that's what you have. So mm-hmm. you're in theory doing nothing but yet having the rent coming into you. Your, your responsibility is a lot lower um, and that money just keeps on going as mm-hmm. long as you keep the property in condition that it can be rented. Um, as opposed to on the flip situation, once you sell it, you have your money and, and you're done. So. And some of the flip concepts come into buy and hold, right? So you still need a team of people, the lender, your real estate agent, but also you might need a contractor. You might need to improve this property so that it's we're being responsible um, landlords and we're allowing people to live in good spaces you know, that are reasonable within that neighborhood. And so there's costs involved in that. And sometimes buy and hold, the reason it's probably harder is because you know, there's a period of time, and maybe you can talk about that, that it takes to kind of clear before you really start seeing the benefit of buy and hold. It's a long-term play, which is the reason it's wealth building versus short term. Right, yeah, totally. Um, for, for your buy and holds, especially if you have a loan on them, it's gonna take you a while to see huge returns. Um, and and I tell everybody, real estate's not a get-rich-quick scheme. I mean, it's just not what it is. It's it's a long-term investment. It's kind of like throwing money into your 401k or any of those other type of investments. It's a long-term investment. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a part of your team, you, you definitely have to have a contractor. Um, a property manager is another really important piece. To well, and it. banks, if you're working with a lender, banks and lenders want to see, you know, one of the first questions they ask is, Who's going to manage this? And if it's the answer is you, they're going to want you to sort of prove to them that you have experience doing that and you're good at that. Yeah, and not only experience and good at it, but do you have the time? Do you have the capacity? Because really, here's what the banks are going to look at when they when they sit down and look at it. It's like, okay, do you have the ability to pay back this loan 
if the tenants end and they're making the payment. Mm -hmm. And if you are not, if you have to take time away from your job to manage the property, you know, that affects what mm -hmm. they think, you know, then that's going to affect your daily job, which mm -hmm. is what they're counting on to cover, you know, those, those losses. So when actually when banks do their, um, formulas for figuring out if they want to do the loans or not, they always build in a management fee into that expense right and, away. And so we can, if you're a buy and hold investor, you got a team, you've identified property, you got a contractor that renovates it to a state that is good to have people rent it and you get tenants in there. And so a property manager is going to sort of take care of those day-to-day -day tenant phone calls, maintenance issues. They're going to really make it an investment versus having it create just a job for you. Because if you go in with into a buy and hold situation and you're gonna be the landlord, you now have a job. You don't have a real estate investment. Correct. And how much the costs on hiring a property manager, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so they vary you know, from management company to management company, but basically it's right around 10% um, of your gross rents that you collect. And if you have more than one property, usually that's a lot lower. They'll, they'll drop that down. Um, but again, I think that's a number I would use as an average um, just because there's, there's other costs that come with it. So. And then there's costs that you, just by owning a property, they're gonna come up. So maybe talk us through what to expect or how much money to set aside in preparation for things that go wrong or you know, what, what are on those lists. Yeah, so I mean, obviously the big ones you think of, the roof is going to go bad at some time, the heating, the air conditioner, water softeners. Flooring you know, transition. Yeah, flooring, uh, paint. Um, you know, at some point you're going to have to start remodeling the kitchens and, and those kind of things. So um, what we tell people to do is, is put a 10% reserve aside. Uh, again, that's of your gross rent and just hold that in, in one every month, month every month put into that but also having a reserve going in is yeah you're amazing. definitely going to want to have a reserve going in and and that number is kind of i i let people decide that on their own mm -hmm. um based on their portfolio there's lots of things that, that you can do with a number but and what the personal situation is of each of those those and some conservative investors would tell you, you know, have three years worth of expenses from all of your properties in reserve at all times. Mm -hmm. So that is if everything went bad and nothing, all, everything was vacant, then you, you could cover it for three years, which is a very conservative way, but that is a formula some very successful real estate investors use. Others I've seen are like 18 months. And, you know, when you start pushing under a year of reserve, cash, you're starting to put yourself in a tough situation, potentially if something goes wrong, a roof, an HVAC unit, you know, something like that. Well, and the other piece of that is forget the roof HVAC. I mean, again, I've been in this business a long time. And so I was around when the recession hit and, and watched what people had to do. The Great Depression? <laughs> Not that long ago. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> similar you know, there was guys who didn't have a reserve account put in and no longer had tenants, so then what were they going to do? And so that's where that, if you have that 18-month cushion sitting around, mm -hmm. then you're going to be able to cover some of those. And things. also, if you're a cash buyer versus somebody that is leveraging that or taking a loan from a bank or from a hard money lender, um, you know, that formula plays into that too. If you have zero debt on the property versus you have you know, only 20% equity, then right, cause you're, that all plays into that formula. Right, for sure, because your holding costs go down. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have that mortgage expense you have to worry about. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got flip, you've got buy and hold, and you can do that in residential, you know, single family homes, you could do that too. You could do that in multifamily residential. So two, four unit, eight unit, big apartment buildings. You could also do that in commercial space. So you could do that with, you know, retail or office space industrial space, right? And you've got vacant land to develop. All of these things are real estate investments. Let's start with residential. Um, maybe talk a little bit about that, the differences of it or some strategies with it. Yeah, so you have, your probably your safest overall real estate investment is a single family home residential mm -hmm. investment. And you know, that's the house sitting on the block, um, whatever, three bedroom house, right. average home. And everybody wants to live in that in, in, a, in a house. So those are relatively easy to rent. Mm -hmm. um, always going to have a tenant 
more than likely that wants that. Um, it's relatively easy to sell because maybe a person just wants to move into it. So your if you get in a situation where you decide you no longer want to invest in real estate or you need to liquidate your asset, um, you're able to do that easier with a single family home mm -hmm. than another type of, right. of real estate investment. So the, the bigger the building, you're kind of saying it's going to be probably more difficult to exit sometimes. It depends on the market. In our market right now, you can't even find duplexes for sale, really. Right. Uh, but as you get bigger, you know, 30 unit apartment buildings, 60 unit apartment buildings, those have much higher uh, price tags and there's a interest in those, but sometimes they're harder to exit from depending on the area. Yeah, well, depending on the area, depending on, there's just fewer people who have the ability to take that deal. Pay, pay a higher amount. And, and there are people who just don't want to invest in commercial property mm -hmm. or only want to have mm -hmm. you know, a certain amount of doors that they want to be managing or running. So that's why that single family home is, it would be your safest. Then the next is those duplexes um, and, and, a, and a two unit, and they can either be the side-by-side -side kind, upper, lower, or the old houses converted, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, um, which again are, you have two incomes coming out of right. one property, we call that two doors, um, and then you go into four units and multi, you know, larger multi-family, you know, like you said, 30 units um, and, and plus. So it just, it's... And maybe for a new investor, especially um, those that don't have maybe a family yet or anything like that, a strategy can be to buy a duplex and live in half of it, rent the other half out to sort of cover the majority of your costs. It probably won't cover all of your costs, but... You know, that's a good strategy to begin your real estate investing. I know that we know people that have done that. And yeah, it's a great way of, of getting into it. Um, again, it, why not have somebody else pay your mortgage? Right. And I mean, that's that's really what it boils down to. And, and yeah, I mean, if if I could convince my wife and kids to move be okay duplex. to move into duplex, I would. But <laughs> for some reason, they don't like that. But. So then what about commercial? You've got a little more risk in commercial, but there's a little bit uh, bigger reward, obviously. Talk a little bit about commercial investing. You know, there are people that flip big buildings. Mm -hmm. There are people that uh, buy and hold these uh, buildings as well in every community. Talk us through a little bit about just kind of the 30,000 foot view, the overview of uh, commercial real estate investing. Yeah, so commercial is your highest risk, highest reward. Um, and and what it boils down to is is you can go in and, and buy, you know, a Dick's Sporting Goods building, a building that Dick's Sporting Goods is in, um, and have them as your tenant, and they've got this long term lease in place, and you're feeling really good about that, right. and you know you're you're good to go. Well, take J C Penney's as your tenant. Well, what what happened with J C Penney's a few mm -hmm. years ago? Right, they they moved out. Um, so, and commercial has a lot of different things. It has retail, you have office, you have industrial. industrial um, you know, right now, warehouse is a huge need, you know, and I think Amazon and, and all these companies play into that. Um, and so these, these warehouse buildings are popping up all mm -hmm. over. Um, and, and you get a pretty good return on your investment there, but you you don't have, you know, this guarantee. There's not everybody looking to be into a warehouse building or be in this retail space, you know, mm -hmm. where Dix is um, or any of those. So. Again, it's just a big overview, but... Um, so what I hear you saying is that if you can get it filled, this is a high reward. So the problem is you're not talking about a three-bedroom ranch that stays vacant for a few months. If you're talking about a commercial building that's vacant for 12 months, 18 months, with it, which isn't uncommon, especially in the time period we just came out of. You know, there's still space filling, but retail space is kind of hard right now. Um, your holding costs are a lot higher, so the dollars are just bigger. Right. That, well, that's exactly right. Your um, your time down of in that, in that meeting with not having a tenant in there mm -hmm. is just so much longer. Um, you know, but uh, the flip side of that is once you get it filled, they right. usually will sign a longer term lease. Whereas you know, in a house or apartment, you know, you may have you may be turning tenants over right, every couple right. months I mean, in, in some respects. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's a downside of commercial is, is what happens when it's right. vacant and how do we get that thing filled. So let's talk a little bit more what, about what you're seeing actually in the live market. We're in Wisconsin, specifically in southern Wisconsin. We work, um, you know, from the county or the, the state line, so Janesville, Beloit, in Rock County, all the way through 
Madison and Dane County and the surrounding area and really all over the state, but you work with a lot of real estate investors, so does our office. What are you seeing right now? I know in our area there's a lot of out of state, out of area investors that are uh, that have had a lot of interest in the Madison area, Janesville area now, Beloit area is very popular. What are you seeing as far as returns and what people are sort of after and popular? Yeah, so um, South Central Wisconsin is like the place to invest right now. Um, and I think people, the reason for that is our, our cost, our entry level cost is a lot lower right now than what the average is in the rest of the country. Um, but we're seeing huge growth um, in, in our area. Rock County is less than 1% vacancy rate. You know, that means that you know, we're, we have a shortage of apartments. Um, we've, you know, uh, Rock County was a very, very much a blue collar county that got hit pretty hard in the recession. And so as low as it was, it's come back and actually now we're seeing our values up and above what they were you know, mm -hmm. back in 06, 07. Um, so we're seeing a lot of, of upside here right now. And and the other thing that we're seeing is because of our averages, you know, is, well, let's just take Madison as an example. The Because of having government here, um, you know, with the capital, having the university, the university here. The hospital system. Yeah, this brings in lots of people so we have well over 50% of the residents here who are tenants. Mm -hmm. um, that creates a really big need for residential housing, uh, tenant housing. So um, that's just pushing into Rock County. Uh, Rock County's got a lot of job growth happening right mm -hmm. now. So all of, we have all these things coming together, um, creating you know this little area, a little pocket of really great opportunity for for investors um, it's a low vacancy rate relatively low ent entry level um, and your returns are, are, are pretty good mm -hmm. um, you know you're still gonna be in a double digit return mm -hmm. relatively easily um, you know for, for most in Rock County in Rock County yeah mm -hmm. Dane County would not be that way no. Dane, Dane County you're lucky to get above five percent yeah in some of those things but good and so if somebody's interested in real estate investing how do they get a hold of you What's your email at? Okay, yeah, so my email is ron at propertyrevival.com. And they can reach out to you uh, just with an interest in real estate investing. They can reach out to you to sort of search for homes or have help you, you can help them sort of explain the process of investing. You can also connect them to teammates and partners, right? Like, Right, yeah, so when I, when I deal with investors, I like to sit down and just have a meeting with you, whether it's over mm -hmm. the phone, face to face, however we do it, but kind of get your strategy and, and just kind of go over with you, big picture view, mm -hmm. and make sure that you're in it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And when I say that is, everybody again, and I'll use Bigger Pockets as an example, because there's a lot of folks on Bigger Pockets, mm -hmm. and, and they, you hear these podcasts of these guys making huge investments or whatever. Um, you know, I like to get a reality check, I guess, after mm -hmm. some of those things, and just talk with guys and, mm -hmm. and, and gals and see what, what they want to do, and, and we come up with a plan and we make that work for mm -hmm. them. So, yeah, we'll tie you into a lender, we'll tie you into an accountant, we'll tie you into lawyers, contractors, all that good stuff. Um, but we, just, again, want to make sure that what you really want to do is invest in real mm -hmm. estate in our area. So uh, that's going to do it for the live show, Ron. Thanks for joining us um, on real estate investing. Thanks for joining us. Again, we have offices in Dane County, uh, in Madison, at Seminole Road and the Beltline, Property Revival Realty, and one in Janesville as well on Pontiac Drive. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you when we go live again. Take care.